Over the last several weeks, Microsoft has asked tens of thousands of employees across Asia, Europe, and here in Canada to work from home. The impact of COVID-19 has resulted in a seismic shift in the way organizations conduct business and has altered the lives of people around the world. Businesses both locally and globally are doing their part to protect their employees and support them during these challenging times. From working remotely to shifting to virtual conferences and events, the impact of COVID-19 is being felt around the world. Today on Kev Talks, I'm chatting with Avery Schwartz, founder and CEO of Camp Tech, on how to support our communities, organizations, and of course each other while managing business through this crisis. Avery, welcome to Kev Talks. Oh, thank you so much, Kevin. Pleased to be here. Fantastic. Well, let's let's get right into it. The most difficult aspect I, I've seen, uh, Avery, around COVID is the uncertainty about when things will return to normal. We're engaged, we at Microsoft, we're engaged daily with customers and partners who are enhancing or adapting to flexible work environments because of the pandemic. But Avery, do you see flexible work environments as the new norm? And how has COVID-19 changed the business culture? I mean, I think you've really hit the nail on the head right there, Kevin, talking about how it's so infuriating <laughs> that, that we don't know what the timeline is going to be on this. And that's so, so hard for everyone for many reasons, but it's definitely hard for business leaders because if you don't know how long something's going to be, it's really, really hard to plan for it. And the type of plan that you would make for your business for, say, a two-month interruption is very different than the type of plan you would make for a 10-month interruption or a two-year interruption. So when I when I talk a lot with, with business owners, particularly small and medium-sized uh, business owners, I do see usually it's, it's kind of one of three things, either people that have just said, you know, because of the nature of what we do. So say maybe a physiotherapist or mm -hmm. a florist, you know, it's basically impossible for them to run their business right now. So they're just trying to survive until the time when they can run their business. And then for those that can adapt to working from home in this new work environment, I'm really seeing two big things right now. I'm seeing some that are still being reactionary. They're waiting to hear, you know, when can we rush back into the office? And then I'm seeing some companies, and Microsoft is one of these, um, that's showing a lot of strong leadership around the idea that, hey, you know what? Maybe we aren't going to be able to rush back. And even if we were, it's not going to be the same. So let's just kind of put that out of our minds for a little bit and instead be as proactive as we can into making this situation more tenable for all of our employees and for the company. You know, and I've noticed that, you know, here we are recording this. Uh, it's been a couple of months since we've had the lockdown in Canada. Yes. And I've noticed a shift even over that time that at first it was a real sense of, like, okay, okay, look, we're just going to wait and see. We're just going to be in a holding pattern. But the longer and longer it goes on, I really am seeing a, a definite distinction between those that are still choosing to be more reactionary and those that are being more proactive and thinking about how they're going to move forward. As we see, every business, Avery, is facing challenges due to the outbreak with many, uh, as you mentioned, having to close their doors, literally shutter them during these strict periods of social distancing. Governments are now starting to talk about a staged restart to our economy. When it comes specifically to SMBs, what are the ways in which we can support the small businesses across Canada? There are so many ways <laughs> that we can support SMBs. And this is this like really just goes right to my heart because I love the SMB. I know you do. I so know you're super passionate. I love it. I'm so passionate about them. Um, you know, there's things that we can do at all levels. So we, we can go really, really macro and we can go really micro. So at the macro level, it's so important for us to tell our government representatives that we care about small business in our communities. And that we don't want to see them, you know, go under because of this. Um, and doing things like rent relief is a really big one for a lot of small business. So, you know, you can go really big and I encourage you to go big and talk to your representatives. But then also you can go small. And when you go small, what I mean by that is talking to the business owner, you know, and, and this is where technology is really, really cool because so many small businesses have really embraced social media as a way to communicate directly with their customers and clients. So, you know, I'm thinking about all the small businesses that I love in my community. 
And I'm reaching out directly to the business owner through, say, Twitter or Instagram. And I'm able to say, hey, how can I help you? What what would be the, the best thing I could do for you right now? Is it buying a gift card so that it improves your cash flow for when you open again? Or is it, you know, are, are you going to be offering curbside pickup soon where I can order online and pick up at the shop in a contact-free, safe way? Um, but but the big thing here, Kevin, I think is not assuming, um, you know, not just like rushing out and assuming that you know what a business needs. Instead, just ask them. And, and it's so easy now to ask them through technology. It is really, really important uh, in the sense of how many organizations are managing in ways they've never had to before. And they're doing that not only you know remotely like we're doing right now, but they're also having to manage other aspects of their lives. Some are taking care of children. Some are trying to homeschool uh, their young ones and God yeah. bless all the teachers, right? Uh, others yes. are caring for elderly. So a lot has changed. And are there learnings that you've had over the past few weeks that you could share with, with us? Always looking for advice. Supporting employees is so, so important right now. And letting them know that their jobs are safe is a huge way to relieve pressure. And then after that, I'd say, you know, meet people where they are. I think really strong leadership is flexible leadership. And, you know, getting a, a sense of, of what's going on with your employees. And you don't have to get too, too personal, but just, you know, it, Maybe you know, and maybe you don't know, but if you know, maybe you do know that they have young kids at home. And if so, then maybe you're being a little bit more flexible around the hours in which they work. Uh, maybe the deliverables change a little bit. You you still have your business goals and everybody's got to get their work done by the end of the day. But exactly how they get that work done might need to change a little bit. And I, I think um, really strong leaders are ones that that realize that they can be a little bit more flexible and trusting with their employees. In close, as you think about what piece of advice to business leaders and SMB entrepreneurs regarding resilience through a crisis, what are a couple of your thoughts there? I really encourage business owners to go back to thinking about why they do what they do. What is their core mission? What are they trying to, to do in the world? And the how of how you do it is probably changing. I, I can't think of any business where the how hasn't changed yeah. right now. But if you go back to that core, core mission, the why you do what you do, um, also looking a lot at what is the value that you provide to your customers and clients, knowing that the values may have changed a little bit right now. But if you really, really focus on those core, core things, then the details of of how you roll things out, that that's it's not easier, but it, but it all flows from that idea of, of the mission. So um, whenever anybody feels like they, they're kind of losing their way a little bit, I say, let's, let's get back to basics. Let's go back to the why you are doing this in the first place. And, uh, and that might help guide you to find the next step of how to do it differently right now. Well, that's absolutely brilliant. Thanks so much, Avery. I really appreciate it. In this episode of Kev Talks, in a very unusual episode of Kev Talks, <laughs> we have shared with you some really key thoughts around how to deal with an uncertain environment. And as COVID-19 continues to spread rapidly around the world, more companies are now choosing to make changes that benefit their workers, as Avery has outlined. And it continues to inspire me how Canadian organizations, large and small, are using online platforms such as Teams and others to keep team members motivated, engaged, connected, and to drive business outcomes. The collective effort from my perspective, and I think Avery from yours as well, of Canadians to support one another and keep each other safe is amazing. It's one of the many reasons I'm so proud to live and work here. Stay positive and healthy Canada. Avery, thank you so, so much for joining me today. Do you agree with this statement, Avery? We are in this together. We are, for better or worse, Kevin. We're in this together. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. A real pleasure. Thanks for coming on Kev Talk, Avery. Thank you. Cheers. All the best.